What's up guys? This is Tyler and Shane and today we bring you our top five, with an honorable mention, hand traps of the new format. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> Sorry that it What's up guys? This is Tyler and Shane and today we bring you our top five, with an honorable mention, hand traps of the new Yu-Gi-Oh! format. We're gonna show you which hand traps you should play to destroy the meta. That's right. So, cue the intro. House of Cards. TCG. So before we get into our top six, there is a mention that I want to bring you, and that is the new hand trap from Blazing Vortex. Now, me being a big Dragon League player, I think this is awesome. So Heavenly Zephyr Miradora reads the activation and effect of this card cannot be negated. So if I if I activate this, you can't stop it. If your opponent special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack from the extra deck, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summoned from the hand, you can target one face-up opponent's monster that was special summoned from the extra deck. Neither player can activate that monster's effects while this monster is face-up on the field. So I just wanted to talk about a little bit and how I think that this is actually gonna be a key card in the Dragon Link deck. I actually am gonna play a play set and I'm gonna side it in in my Dragon Link deck. The reason why I like it, now I know that you're not a big fan of it because- Not a fan. Most people aren't, but me, a Dragon Link player, I love it. And here's why. If I know I'm going second, and I know I'm playing an uh, opponent that goes into the extra deck, then I'm gonna activate this card because most of the time, unless it's Dragoon, um, which I think this does target. Does this target? I believe it does target. You can target. So you couldn't target this on Dragoon anyway. But anything else though, this is an extra extender for Dragon Link players. I mean, if you think about it, if I'm going second and you bring out Mechaba, right? Yep. I can special summon this. You can't attack because it's still your first turn. Or if you bring out Winda. So this card is out on the field now. I negated that monster. I can now combo off and then I think the key to this is to make sure when you're playing this card, know your inboard because once you link this off or you take this off the field, then it's, it's gone. The effects are gone. So then that extra deck monster now becomes live. So you better get a Dragoon or something to battle over that extra deck monster once you extend off or link this off. But um, I really like that card. I think it's great going second in a Dragon Link deck because it is a dragon and it's an extender for the deck. But yeah, let me tell you why okay. I think this card is overrated and you trash. should not He's play it. Trash. You shouldn't play it even in Dragon Link deck, and here's why. Okay, tell me why. This card, the effects, it's 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 a good card. I'm not going to deny it's a good card. I hear you. They're just it, five to six better options to beat you know different decks right now. This card is good, but there's other cards that are great. So that's why I, I wouldn't play Zephyr, and that's you're gonna find out which are top five with an honorable mention. Correct. Uh, throughout this video, so we're gonna show you why, and you, as you see the video, you'll understand why this card should not be played. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to go into it and talk about it a little bit. I do like it, so if anybody wants to see it, there it is. We got Heavenly Zephyr Miradora. Brand played, new Blazing Vortex. Played in your Dragon League decks. <laughs> All right, let's hit our top five with the honorable mention. That looks good. All right, guys, so I'm gonna leave my Heavenly Zephyr, Zephyr, I, I don't even know, I don't know. Zephyr. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave it right here so you can see it. Um, again, played in Dragon Links, but let's go. Or don't. We're gonna start with our honorable mention. This is gonna be number six on the list for hand traps. Here we go. Flip them. Ghost Bell and Skullmeister. Skullmeister. So tell me why you put Skullmeister in there. Skullmeister, I think it's so generic whenever an effect is activated in the graveyard. It just it just feels like a lot of the decks right now are so graveyard reliant. Um, Drytron, uh, especially if you're playing Drytron, Skullmeister is really good. Keeps their Drytron monster in the graveyard. Um, I like Ghost Bell too, but I think Skullmeister is just uh, a really great card. I will say I do like Skullmeister because it's not a hard ones per turn. Yep. So you can activate multiple of them in a, um, on a turn. And also for Ghost Bell, I mean, it just hits a lot of different things. And I think it's also important in the meta uh, stopping some of the other hand traps that Ghost Bell also 
does negate because if things activate in the grave or if they banish, which right now banishing is a very heavy part of the format. Yep. Uh, a lot of people in that. So I like Ghost Spell for that reason. So maybe we'll talk about why Shane likes Ghost Spell coming forward. We shall see. All right, number five in our top five hand traps of the current meta, Nabiru and Drollin oh, Lockbird. This is an interesting number five for you. I chose Nibiru. Uh, a lot of people are sleeping on Nibiru, but here's the thing. Combos are coming right back. You got the Liralisk and Tri-Brigade. You got Virtual World. You got Dragon Link still out there. You have so many um, Drytrons even acceptable to Nibiru. So if you're not playing Nibiru, I mean, it's still a heavy hitting card in the format. And I chose Droll and Lockbird. This card could easily be even higher on the list, but I, I put it at uh, number five because it really is only crucial to play against one deck right now, which is Drytron. If you play it against other decks, it kind of just doesn't do a whole lot. You know, might you might still stun them a little bit, but Drytron, it really, really ends their turn, you know, essentially. So I, I like Droll and Lockbird a lot, but not enough to main deck it. So that's why I have it here at number five. All right. Getting into number four on the list is... Nibiru. And Droll and Lockbird, what the <laughs> chance is that? All right, so I'm gonna give you my take on Droll and Lockbird and why I like it. I know you said it's really only formatted towards uh, Drytron, but it also hits a lot of things that play pots, which is why I like Droll and Lockbird. Because how many times do people open pots, which is pot of um, prosperity, You can, even though you can't draw anymore after that, and you have Pot of Extravagance, you have Pot of Desires, you have Pot of Avarice even, even but that's different, that doesn't apply. But it hits those formats that play that, so Virtual World that opens Pots. Uh, it also hits Invoke Dogmatica. How many times do you go Terraforming to Magical Meltdown to Alistair to Invocation? Yep. So if I can pop you on the Terraforming or pop you on the Magical Meltdown, that's huge there. And of course it hits Dragon Link and Drytron as well. Yep, and I like Namiru. Uh, Tyler basically said it all, but the other thing I wanted to add in is a lot of people right now aren't expecting you to have Namiru. A lot of people aren't playing it, aren't side decking it. So if you uh, side or main deck this, the opponent may not expect and they'll play recklessly and you can really punish them with the Namiru. Absolutely. All right, getting to number three and flip it. Gamma. So you go Gamma, tell us why you chose Gamma. I like Gamma, you can use it um, offensively or defensively. Um, I would play it in Drytron if you were allowed to. Can I, can I just flex real quick on that? Admire that looks, the collector's rare. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> is that why it doesn't have a deck sleeve? That's why. <laughs> First edition as well, for the viewers. Uh, but yeah, I like Gamma a lot, negates a monster effect. Um, a lot of times Gamma is enough just to end their turn because it negates and destroys, which a lot of these don't. So I like Gamma a lot right now. All right, and I'm gonna go with Lancia. So Lancia's actually climbed up higher on my list with the emergence of the Liralisk and Trap Brigade uh, coming out. A lot of people are playing that. So when you think Invoke Dogmatica being a top five for sure, you have um, Eldritch up there, you have um, even Dragon Link maybe, but then you have Dinos, and then you have um, the Liralisk and Trap Brigade that have hit it along with Virtual World. I mean, Lancia, I'm gonna go on a limb and say Lantia might even be worth main decking just because the meta, it hits all the top five meta decks that are out there. Lantia is a solid choice and a lot of people are uh, kind of getting away from that and I like Lantia a lot. Lantia is good. Let's move on to number, number two. two. And I pick Gamma. So you pretty much hit it. I mean, Gamma is so great. And if you're playing a searching deck that you may not open with a summon, so if you open with a searcher, if you open with a pot of desires, you open with something like that, Gamma also negates the ashes, the drolls, the um, DD crows, like all that. As long as you don't have a monster on your field, then you can Gamma their hand trap, which is why I love Gamma so much. Yep, and I chose Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. Um, like Tyler said, it's just, it's a, it's a really good card that stops your opponent from banishing or special summoning a monster from the graveyard. So that also... Hits Drytron with that effect. Banishing a card from the graveyard hits a lot of decks. Um, so I, I really like Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion. I think it's very generic, really safe to put in your main deck. All right, and I have a good feeling I know what both of our number ones are. Let's flip them. Ash Blossom. Oh, we got, we match. Look we at do. that. Yeah. So both playing Ash Blossom. I mean, do we even need to explain Ash Blossom? It's just <laughs> so good. It can literally stop opponent's turns. If you hit Ash on the right spot, 
It's game. Yep, so generic. Every deck is gonna try to add a card from the deck to the hand or special summon from the deck. So having the Ash, um, it's it's the best main deck hand trap in my opinion, bar none. Um, none of these are really on the same level just because of how generic Ash is. Yeah. And for you guys that are dropping Ash to two, come on, bump it back to three. You know you wanna see Ash, so. <laughs> All right guys, that's been Shane and Tyler with our top five updated hand trap video for February, 2021. Anything else in closing? No, just don't play that news effort card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Tyler and Shane, House of Cards TCG, signing, signing out. out.